uh, rain has now made its way to the speedway. Uh, there have been lightning strikes around the track, and this storm system is moving to the northeast. We thought it might miss the racetrack, but a couple of pop-up showers on the way uh, have come right over the speedway. X marks the spot. It's not buried treasure like I read on Twitter the other week. It, those are the lightning strikes, and you can see the most of this storm system uh, is going up and, uh, and to the north. I'm, to, I'm told this has passed Pell City, but these little pop-ups have wet the track somewhat. So our cameras at the track are down, but we're going to stay right here at Talladega. So why don't we race in the rain in NASCAR on these big super speedway ovals? Here's one reason. <laughs> you can't even run on the banking at, at, at 55, 30 miles an hour. Track drying efforts <laughs> continue. It does take a long time to dry this track, and we're told they have lost turn number four. It is completely wet, and therefore, uh, NASCAR has just announced today's GEICO 500 has been postponed, rescheduled for tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern time, right here on Fox. The lineup will be just as you see them, set by a blind draw with the three Joe Gibbs cars out front. We'll be ready to race here tomorrow at the world's fastest speedway, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Led by reigning Cup Series champion Kyle Busch in green and their crews, the entire garage area has rallied around Bubba Wallace and the number 43 today. Because yesterday afternoon, a noose was found hanging in the garage stall of Bubba's race car. In the NASCAR Cup garage area, a secure area where access is limited to competitors, officials, and track staff. A despicable act by someone flying directly in the face of NASCAR's efforts to build a culture that is diverse, equal, and welcome. That's why Richard Petty is here today, and why Ryan Blaney, Bubba's friends, competitors, and on-track foes have closed ranks around him. When that window net goes up later today, racing is the great equalizer. Everybody's six foot four, 240 pounds. Everybody has 600 horsepower. No one is white, black, brown, or yellow. They are all racers. And they are all our heroes. The fastest speedway on earth. Drivers love it or dread coming here. It's the Geico 500 on Fox. Threatening skies to the west. So we're going to get right after it here. 89 degrees, feels like 100. Humidity is in the 80s as well. And waving the green flag, Ravens quarterback from Alabama, Marlon Humphrey, sends them off for 500 miles. Majority out the back, just those two together up top. KB is on you. They're separated up top now. Wide open in front of Martin. Off of you by half. You're clear. You're clear. That's Chris Lambert, Denny Hamlin's spotter. KB's quarter off of you. I'm a little surprised we haven't seen somebody. I've seen some gaps and some holes there and some momentum and some big runs that maybe could have allowed somebody to go three wide. A little, little conservative in this opening lap. We'll see what happens in lap two. Jimmy Johnson gave Mark Church Jr. a nice big shove to get that lead, and he drops down in front of Denny Hamlin, and now it's Toyota, 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 top, or in the front three. And so he already, I think, had an issue this, this is uh, this is when the tire goes down. So he had already hit the wall or scuffed the wall there. That's all it took. Right front tire is down. So Hamlin will make a stop under green. Hopefully, no further damage beyond the tire.
has Tyler Reddick. Puts his Richard Childress Racing Chevrolet out front. Boy, we've seen a lot of laps at Talladega when either an RCR Chevy, number three or number eight, uh, say from DEI, has been out front here with an Earnhardt aboard. Today it's Reddick's turn. Pretty good amount of damage out. We got the caution due to rain in turn one. Yeah, Jeff, it's over a mile from one end of the speedway to the other, so. So we're under caution for a shower here at Talladega. Third career stage win for Richard Childress Racing. And driver Tyler Reddick. Well, it's going to be a nice confidence booster, not just for Tyler Reddick, for those drivers behind him that are looking at that rear bumper and that yellow rookie stripe, knowing that you know, what he's done in the Xfinity Series and then what he's done here today. If something flies off Nemechek's car here. Yeah, everything seems to be fine right here. Right there, you see a, a piece of debris or a piece of rubber flies off. There's another piece, and this car starts to swerve to the left like it has a left rear tire going down, and he loses control. And that puts us under the fourth caution of the day. And the first one for an on-track incident. And there you see that left rear tire clearly down. He going well. I don't know. The car just got loose. Didn't look like he had any contact from behind. Maybe a tire went down, but that car just turned around on him going into the corner. Well, if so, then what happened to Joey Gates? Yeah, that's the real question. I think Joey Gase made contact there with Brendan Poole as Brendan was maybe being turned around and then he made contact with the outside wall. Oh, oh man, that, we saw how well those Penske Fords orchestrated those restarts. That one did not go so well for Joe Gibbs racing. Oh, big spin, Chase Elliott, Chase Elliott and everybody scatters. Several years ago, they paved that entire backstretch apron at Talladega, and it's a good thing they did. You see heavy damage to the front end of that car. And you see the right rear's down. I mean, all the tires down. Big damage. Running fourth the last time they came by the line. My car up on the outside. Big push from the two car, Brad Keselowski. Oh, the 22 at Logano moves up in front of him while he's getting that push from Brad Keselowski. Brad, again, like we talked with Logano earlier, can't see what's in front of him. He's just pushing Chase Elliott. Chase tries to make some evasive action to go around the 22. Those bumpers connect and turns Chase Elliott right around. Here comes Austin Dillon. Makes contact with that right rear in the nine. Wow, how did William Byron miss it? that it was as close from up high as it looked from here. So here comes the push, the rear bumper, Chase Elliott. Now he has a huge run coming, and he just, you know, he's got to figure out where to go with it. He doesn't want to run right in the back of the 22. He tried to hedge to the inside at that same time, and that's the problem. When you're getting pushed like that, you really can't turn the steering wheel, and, and Brad Keselowski's on his rear bumper, and it's, it's going to hook that car and turn it around. Boom, you saw that very last little bit of contact. And that's what sent Chase Elliott around as he tried to go to the inside of the 22. And here's audio from Brad Keselowski. Nothing I can do, I'm off again, getting pushed, man. Yeah, it's important. That uh, certainly was not your fault there. Jimmy did the outside of the 47 to Stenhouse through the tri-oval, side drafts. Now here comes a pretty big run from Kevin Harvick being pushed by the 17. And Kevin just 
decides to take. There's a small gap there between Stenhouse and Jimmy Johnson. He had such a big run. He chose to go to that middle lane. Not sure if there was enough room there. Just closed up on him in a hurry. Green flag. Stenhouse doesn't get going on the restart. That's going to allow Kevin Harvick, Chris Buescher, Brad Keselowski on the outside to pull ahead. Not good for Blaney. Got to wonder, did that 47 bobble there because of being low on fuel? Now, Blaney has some help. But is it too late? Blaney pokes out. Stenhouse is with him. Harvick got away from oh, Busher. Reckon. But up front, they're racing for the win. Blaney's the crash ahead. is in the back, and Blaney is the leader. Stenhouse comes back to him on the bottom. Off turn four, three wide. Not over yet. Here comes Eric Jones. Nemechek trying to push Jones. Eric Jones with help. Here comes Almirola. Crash into the wall. I think it's Stenhouse. It might be Blaney. Oh my goodness, they were what, three, four wide? Slamming and banging. Almirola spun out, but he's in third position at the line. Great job there, Josh. Way to stay calm, collected. Scoring unofficial and under review. And Ryan Blaney wins Talladega. What a wild finish. Now, Ryan Blaney was able to side draft, get that run, get to the inside of the four. Here comes a huge run. John Hunter Nemechek to the rear bumper of Eric Jones, just shoving him to Ryan Blaney. Ryan Blaney goes from the top all the way to the bottom to try to block that run. More contact. Man, Stenhouse was so close to pulling ahead of Blaney. Wow. And look, look at the 10 car and spinning as he backs up at the, the line. line. How about that? 